is not in one direction. This exercise is a dead clean into a parallel squat. A one bell dead clean into a parallel squat. A lot of things we do with kettlebells is a moldy movement where we not only do one movement, we do two exercises. And again, that's what life and that's what being an athlete, that's what you, know, you need to be able to do is move. So we got a dead clean into a parallel squat. Again, I love loading the weight on the front of the body when we squat. If you look, it'll get down parallel. With the squat, we'll talk about the squat in a few minutes, but you're working your glute and your hamstrings. It's a great body movement here. Chris Duggs is exceptional. Good for the body, and This exercise is a dead clean into a squat into a one bell press. Okay, now we've taken three exercises. We're we're taking the squat, combine it with the dead clean, and the shoulder press. A good military press. Good full body explosive movement. And I keep mentioning full body, but that's how we live. That's how we work. We work full body. We're athletes. We're normal people. We're in the military. We have to learn to use our full body and have full body strength. Okay, now we'll go to a two bell dead clean and squat. No different than the one bell, but now we're going to go two bells into a good parallel squat. Generate power with the legs. I want to see that good hop out of the explosion out of the feet and down into a good parallel squat. Again, the parallel squat with the loaded on the front is a lot harder. See the hop out of the feet, the good parallel. Parallel, we're down, his thighs are parallel, and he's working right now with glute and hamstrings. If you don't go parallel, all you do is work your thighs. If you want to you stay flexible, you want to get a little faster, you want to be able to move, you have to activate your glutes and your hamstrings. Okay, here Ransford will show you a two bell dead clean with a squat right into a military press. Full body exercise, we've already done it with the one bell, and now we're going to come out and use both arms. <clears throat> Want to make sure we're parallel and make sure we're driving those bells up hard. There's so many variations you can do with kettlebells, and one of the reasons uh, we like the bells with our program is the variation that we have. The different things that we can do, the body movements that we can do with the bells. We get a little backwards here, we're going to go back to the squat. Uh, the squat, one of the best exercises there is. He wants to make sure that he's parallel. Loaded on the front, he's in a rack position, elbows tight, and he's keeping his head up. Well, the big thing with the squat, you got to keep your head up. If your head drops down and you look down, your chest is going to get down. You never want your knees to go over your toes. If you look, when he goes down parallel, his knees are almost in the middle of his feet. Real good squat here. We're going to go right into the two bell squat, a good parallel squat, feet are in a good athletic stance, eyes are up, chest are up, butts down, he's going parallel, looks really good. The foundation of all exercises. If you, if you have trouble parallel squatting, you're going to have trouble doing a lot of the things we do with bells.
Okay, this exercise is a lunge. What we do is we put the bell in a right hand rack position and we're going to lunge out with the right leg. We want to do that because we want to put the weight over the right leg. If you notice, his left leg is about an inch away from the ground. So now he has to push off with the right leg and push back. Use that power to bring the weight back. Do it from a side view. You notice the, the left leg is about an inch away from the ground. He doesn't cheat. He strides out. It's a great squat variation with a one-legged lunge. Okay, now we'll go into a one bell reverse lunge. He'll just reverse the right leg back with the right leg rack and he'll step back. Leg again about an inch away from the ground, chest up. He has to balance himself out with one bell and he does a real good job. Give you a side view, move back a little bit, Chris. And rack and a left leg reverse lunge. This is a one bell snatch, an old Olympic lift that we do with bells. It's about full body power. Great works on the hamstring. You're working the shoulders, using your legs to generate the power. Watch his chest is tall, his head is up, and he's right up in the air. Give you a side view here. Look at the explosion through the hips. And driving the bell. If you look, he punches through the bell. If you're slow with the punch, the bell's going to come around and whack you on the wrist. You got to punch through. Okay, here we go. Instead of a one bell snatch, we're going to go to a two bell snatch. It says great power. All the same thing as a one bell, but now we've got to generate a little bit more power because we, we got a little bit more weight here. So that's Ramsford punching through the weight so it doesn't whack him right, come around, whack him on the wrist. Okay, here we're going to go two bell snatch, but one with an anchor. So he'll come down, he'll snatch, and one will be an anchor. So really, you got a deadlift with a snatch. Again, you're splitting your body and doing different things. That's how we move. That's how we move in life. That's how we move all the time. Makes you a better athlete being able to split your body. Okay, this is a two bell chest press. What we do to, to kind of activate the core a little bit here, we'll put his feet up at six inches. His elbows are tight and it'll give us good reps. It'll explode up under control down. Okay, now we'll do the same thing with two bells, but we're going to alternate our chest press. It allows you to do a little bit of heavier weight, one arm at a time, and we still have our legs activated. We'll still activate our core and isolate everything on the chest, which is your main um, muscle work here, and your triceps. Okay, this exercise will be just a general shoulder press. To bring it up, we'll use the dead clean, get it up in a rack position, and then he's going to do six good shoulder presses. Under control, we're not throwing the weight around. He's got a good balance on his body. We'll switch you over to the left side to show you a side view. We like keeping the elbow in. Everything we do is tight. Again, we're going to do the two bell shoulder press. Use two bells, just a general, good old fashioned shoulder press. You notice he'll keep his feet balanced. He's got a good athletic stance. Okay, now we'll go into, again, one dead clean to get it up, and we're going to go to an alternating shoulder press. Good multi-direction movement here. Be able to isolate each arm. And use all the same techniques of the shoulder press. Okay, 
here we're going to do a one bell raise. It's no, nothing different to working your front lats. Work your shoulders a little bit here. Notice he brings it up, brings it under control, and takes it down under control. We're not throwing the weight all over the place. We're always in control of the bell. Okay, the next exercise is a variation of the uh, bell raise, we just call it a bell over. We say we got a line coming out from our nose, we try to go over that line, and we just work the front lats in a little bit of a different way. Okay, the next variation is uh, work our triceps a little bit. We do skull crushers. This is a very basic tricep exercise. And we want to keep our elbows in as much as possible. Again, we want to be under control. Full extension, back down behind the head. Of course, you can figure out by now it's called skull crushers because if he slips and drops the bell on his head, he crushed his skull. Okay, variation, everybody likes to work their uh, biceps a little bit, our curls. We do alternating curls, and we just curl it up, roll it up, nice and under control. Again, we're just showing you all different exercises you can do um, without having any other equipment. So you can do this anywhere you want. You can do this at home, you can do this in your office, you can do it in your backyard. You don't need a fancy gym, and you don't need a lot of space. Okay, this next exercise is a burpee. A burpee is a push-up into a dead clean. So we're going to do a burpee into a dead clean. He'll go back down, put the belt down, kick his legs back. Have to balance on the bells. This just isn't easy. And back into a dead clean. There's all kinds of combinations we can use here. The key is being able to use his core and lock up those bells and hold on without falling over. That's perfect. That is exactly what will happen to you if you don't lock your core. Okay, now what we're going to show you is that Bransford had the little problem there locking up his core. When you first start, this is probably the way you should start a burpee. Put your hands through the bells, kick your legs back, do your push-up, come on up, generate up, and then grab the bells and end up. So you're sure you can lock onto those bells and balance yourself. But if you have problems with it, don't stop doing the exercise. Just find another way to do it. is a good full body exercise. Okay, one more variation uh, we'll show you, and there's so many different variations. We're going to do a burpee into a clean, into a two-handed press. And that's a real good job. We'll put the bells back down, kick the legs back, push up, clean, stop, press, and back down. Again, a great full body exercise. I'll tell you, you do a couple reps of these, you'll feel it. And again, Ramster's getting a little tired here. We've been working hard. We're having trouble balancing out a little bit. That's going to happen. We believe if you're going to be an athlete, you're in the military, you're fire, police personnel, or if you're just a general person exercising, you've got to be able to move with strength. One of the keys to this program, we feel, is that you develop strength all over your body. You just don't get isolated areas. And by movement, you even move a lot better. You talk to the guys that have done our bell program for quite a while, the difference in their 40 times, how they move laterally, how it's easier to go up and down steps because they have overall body strength. Here we're going to do the two-handed 
one bell swing, and we're going to step with the right foot. Just swinging the bell out, stepping with the right foot. Okay, we'll come right back at you now, and we'll step with the left foot. And we usually try to do these for about 20 yards, but you can start off with 5 yards, 10 yards. Um, a lot of people tell you you can't get cardio and strength training together. But you talk to the guys who do these bell programs, and they tell you the way we move, and you don't take a lot of breaks, and you get your cardio along with your strength training. Okay, here what we're going to do is a one bell swing, two-handed, but we're drop stepping with the right foot. Whatever you can do forward, you should be able to do backward. We're going to show you in a little bit. We do things lateral with movement. We want to move all kind of different ways. And we'll come back and do the same thing, drop stepping with the left foot. Okay, it's a little bit different because now he's throwing the power forward, throwing the bell forward, and drop stepping left. He has to control with his hips. Mm -hmm. Okay, we've gone front, we've gone backwards, now we'll swing and we'll go laterally. Chris will swing and he'll bring his feet together at the top end of the bell. You see him throw the hips through, good control, but we're learning to move with weight. Okay, I'll go right back the other way, now he'll close with the right foot. The next movement exercise we like to perform is a dead clean with the same type of movement we did with the lateral swing. Again, we'll go front, we'll go backward, we go lateral, but you have to move with strength in every direction. And go right back the other way, switch the bell, and go right back the other way, please. Good hip movement, good full body movement, so it's a lateral dead clean. Very good. The next exercise we're going to show you, we call this uh, wall over the squat. A one bell wall over the squat. And what you're going to see here, Chris is going to start, he's going to take that leg, go over the wall, over a three foot wall, use those hip flexors and right into a parallel squat. Want to open up those hips. We don't want athletes, we don't want uh, fire personnel, we don't want military personnel with closed hips. You gotta be able to move. And we'll go both directions here. One of the things with bells is when you do the bells, you're constantly working your cores, your abs, well, one of our favorite ab exercises is we do a thing called floor wipers. He'll bring the bells up in the air, he'll bring his legs straight up in the air, and Ranford's, Ranford's going to start his progression through his floor wipers. He'll bring his legs down about an inch away from the ground, always bring it straight back up, and this is a great, great ab exercise to the side, to the middle, and also you've got to balance out, you've got to balance your core, you've got to keep your arms locked. Next thing we're going to show you is our stretching routine. By no means am I trying to tell you to do our stretching routine. We use a stretching routine uh, from Jump Stretch in Ohio, Dick Hartzell, probably one of my uh, uh, mentors. Um, just a great thing he does with the bands, the movement with the bands, and we latched onto it. Um, I got involved with Dick about 10 years ago when he made claims to not having an ankle injury for 10 years through his stretching routine. Investigated, dealt with it, went out there, sat and talked with hours for him. I love a stretching routine. In eight years here at uh, Notre Dame High School, we have had two legitimate ankle injuries. So uh, we feel that this help keeps us healthy. But again, we're gonna show you our stretching routine in a few minutes, but I'm not telling you that's what I want you to do at the end of every workout. But I do want you to stretch at the end of every workout. The most important thing you can do. You wanna do a movement stretch before your workout or your team structured event, that's fine. But at the end, shame on you if you're not stretching. 
Um, you're going to prevent injuries. You're going to maintain your muscles. You're going to help your muscles recover. And that's why we stretch at the end of every workout and every practice. Yeah, we, the first thing we're going to show you is we do our ankles first. And a lot of it, you know, just letting the, the player work. He'll take the band, he'll put it around the top of the toe, and you notice he's just working the ankle. Everybody's built different. I'm built different than Chris. Chris, Chris is built different than Ransford. So he knows where his ankle bothers him. So this gives him the opportunity to work it around, see how he's stretching, he's pulling it. 